Now that the player can move around in the world, let's create some quests. To do this, we're going to create a quest class and a quest factory class, kind of like we did with the locations and the items, but we're also going to need an additional class. When we think about quests, there are a couple things that we need to do. One is a quest is going to have certain items you need to turn in. It's going to be something like go out into the farmer's field, kill rats, and bring back five rat tails. It's also going to have some rewards. Sometimes the reward will just be gold or experience points. Sometimes it may give an item, or it may give multiple items. Maybe you get one sword, maybe you get five health potions, maybe you'll get a sword and five health potions. So we need to be able to handle multiple items and multiple quantities. It's the same thing for the items to complete the quest. Maybe you need to bring back one monster head, or maybe you need to bring back two teeth and one tail and six furs or something like that. So we need to be able to hold some list of items that need to be turned in, the quantity of those items that need to be turned in, and then the list of items that will be part of the reward and the quantity for each item of that reward. That's going to be our new class. It's going to help us manage the items and the quantities. So let's open up the solution and we're going to create this new item quantity class. This will be in the engine project and in the models namespace. The class name is item quantity and it has two properties, an integer item ID and an integer quantity. So for a quest, if you need to return five rat tails to complete the quest, we'll create an item quantity object. The item ID will be the item ID for rat tails and the quantity will be five. And for this class, I've got a simple constructor where we take in the item ID and the quantity as parameters, and then we set them to the property values. Next, we need to create a quest class. This will also be in the engine project in the models folder, and it's mostly going to be integer and string properties. So here we have a integer ID, a string for the quest name, a string property for the description, an integer for the reward experience points. When the player completes the quest, how many experience points will they get? Another integer for the reward gold. When they complete the quest, how much gold will they get? And then we have two list properties here. We have a list of item quantity objects, and this is the items to complete. So this is where we're going to say five rat tails, three pieces of fur, whatever we want for the actual completion quest items. And then we have another public list property here that holds item quantities, and this will be the reward items. So if we're going to give the player a rusty sword as a reward, then we're going to create an item quantity object that has the item ID for a rusty sword and a quantity of one. If we're going to give them five health potions, then we would create an item quantity object and the item ID would be the health potion ID and the quantity would be five. Besides the properties for the quest class, we have the constructor here where we pass in all the parameters that we need so we can set the property values. And this includes the parameters for the items to complete. And the data type for that is going to be a list of item quantities, since that's what the data type is for the property. And then the reward items here, which is also the data type of list item quantity, since that's the data type for the property. So the, these are the two classes we need to create the actual quest object. Before we can start creating some quests in the quest factory class that we'll build next, let's add a couple more items so we actually have some items to put in for this item to complete. So we'll go back to the item factory class. This is in the engine project in the factories folder and find the static item factory function. And then I just added these two lines here. So these are two new items we're going to add to the game. I have a item ID of 9001 for a snake fang, and it's worth one gold piece. And then we have item ID 9002 for snake skins, which are worth two gold pieces. Now we have everything in place so we can actually create a quest. So we can create our quest factory class. 
which will be in the engine project in the factories folder. And this will be similar to our other factory classes. It's an internal static class. It's internal because we're only going to use it inside the engine project. And it's static because we don't need to create an instance of this object. This is just kind of a, an engine for us. Then we have a private static variable that's a list of quests. And this is where we're going to store our quest objects in. Then we have a static quest factory function. This is the function that's kind of like a constructor. Even though static classes don't have constructors, this function will be run the first time anyone uses anything inside the quest factory class. So we're going to use this to populate the underscore quest variable. For now, we'll just create one quest. And I'm going to create a variable here called items to complete. And its data type is a list of item quantity. And I say it's equal to a new list item quantity. This is a temporary variable we're going to use so we can add items to complete and then pass that in as a parameter. And then we do the same thing with the reward items. We create this temporary reward items variable that's a list of item quantity. Then on line 17, we're going to add a new item quantity object to the items to complete. This part of line 17 will create a new item quantity object. The item we're going to have in there is 9001, the snake fang, and there's five of those. For the reward items, we're going to add a new item quantity, and the item ID is going to be 1002, so that's going to be a rusty sword, and the quantity is going to be one. We create this, ob this new item quantity object and add that into the reward items. Now we can create the quest. We're going to say underscore quests, so this variable that's going to store a list of all of our quests, we want to add a new quest object. And if we hover over the quest, we can see the parameters. The quest ID is going to be one. The string name is going to be clear the herb garden. The description is going to be defeat the snakes in the herbalist garden the items to complete parameter. The data type for that is a list of item quantity objects. So we're going to pass in the items to complete variable. The one we created up here and added the five snake fangs to. The next two parameters in the quest constructor are the reward experience points and the reward gold. So if the player completes this quest, they get 25 experience points and 10 pieces of gold. And the final parameter is the reward items, where we're going to pass in this temporary variable we made where we stored one rusty sword for our item quantity object. So this is how we will create this new quest and add it to our quest list. And we can retrieve it by calling the internal static get quest by ID function, which is just like the get item by ID in our item factory. It takes a parameter of an ID and then it's going to look in the underscore quest variable, our static variable that's our list of all the quests, try to find the first one where the quest ID equals the passed in ID. And it returns the first one that it finds or the default. First or default is another function we can use on lists. It lets us find the first one that matches this criteria from the quest list and it returns that, or if it doesn't find anything, it returns a default, which in this case, the default quest object is a null. It's nothing. So now we have everything in place so we can create quest objects through our quest factory, and we can de decide what items the player needs to turn in to complete the quest, and then also what items the player will get as a reward. I'll put a link in the description below the video to the support page for this lesson, and that will also have all the source code if you want to copy and paste that in. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment below or leave a comment on the support page, and I'll answer as soon as possible.